In this short video, I will explain the differences between a sequence and a workflow inside of HubSpot. So let's start with workflows. When you start using HubSpot, there are a lot of different options that you are presented with and you may get a bit confused. So I wanted to make this video because especially when I started uh, with HubSpot, I was confused myself. So I wanted to show you how to actually use a workflow, but then also tell you the differences between a workflow and a sequence. So to use a workflow, what you're gonna do is click on create workflow. And this is where you're going to set up your different type of triggers that will then send out emails or maybe create a task or create a contact record. So there's different things that you can trigger to do certain actions. And other systems, other programs, they're called drip campaigns or they're just called automations. Um, but it's basically all the same thing and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So you can start from scratch or you can do templates. So you can choose different templates that HubSpot has created. I normally just start from scratch because I like to have the flexibility to do what I want, but you can choose different trigger types. So what does that mean? That means that you can choose to trigger this workflow based on a contact based property. You can trigger this workflow from a company based property. You can trigger this workflow from a deal based property or a ticket based or a quote based or a conversation based or a feedback submission based. It just depends on what you're trying to do. In most cases, you may be working with contacts. So you may want to create a workflow that is uh, contact based. So let's click on contact base, start from scratch and click on next. You want to make sure that you give your workflow a name so we can say test contact based workflow work Flow. there we go and from here this is where you can start setting up your workflow now the first thing that you will notice is that you have to set an enrollment trigger this is where you can set a filter type based on different properties so you can set it based on a contact property company property a deal property and with each of these filter types if you click on for example contact properties you're going to be presented another layer of um, things that you can do so you can say I want this to be a contact property and I want this to trigger when an email is confirmed or when the first name equals John or when the last paid amount is known or when the last paid amount is not known. So you get the idea. You can choose different filter types or different properties that you can choose from so that uh, you can trigger this workflow. So I like to use form submissions to trigger my workflows, but I mean, it just depends on what you're trying to do. So let's just use that as an example. So I'll go back and then from here, I will select a form submission. And then from here, I will select the form that I want to be submitted that will trigger this workflow. So based Basically, this is saying whenever this form is submitted, this specific form on any page is submitted, let's trigger this workflow. Let's do something. And what do you want to do? Well, that's up to you. You click the plus icon and you can see there's different options. So you can delay, uh, you know, wait for three days or wait for 30 minutes, wait for one hour before you do another thing, right? So let's say you want to delay for a certain um, set of time. Then I can say, let's say I want to wait one hour, okay? before we do something else. So what it's going to do, it says, okay, when someone submits this form, wait one hour, then what? Well, we gotta, we gotta tell it what to do. So we can enroll in another workflow, we can trigger a webhook, we can do some custom code, or you can send them an email. So I'll just say send email, and I'll just do this test one here, and we'll save it. And there you go, you have your first workflow set up. Now, what is the main point of a workflow? The main point of a workflow is to automate something. So let's say that you, you know, obviously if you have a form submission, you wait an hour and you send an email, this is going to uh, do this over and over and over again, as long as this form um, submission is active and as long as this workflow is active. So this is an automated process so that you can automate your outreach and automate, you know, your follow up so that you don't have to do it manually. That is for sequences, which we'll talk about in a second. So once you set up your workflow, you can check out your settings here. You can uh, send it for a specific time if you want. Um, you can check out the performance once you turn it on and you can also check out the history. So once you're done, all you need to do is turn it on. It's going to ask you a few more things like do you, do you want to enroll um, contacts that already uh, submitted this form? You could say yes or no, totally up to you. And then you just turn it on. Right. And now, like I said, this is going to run 24 seven. You don't have to do anything as long as this form is active, as long as this workflow is on, 
people submit something here, it's gonna wait one hour and it's gonna send this email. And again, you don't have to stop at this email, you can do other things here. But now let's talk about sequences. What is the difference? Because when you look at a workflow and then you look at a sequence, you may see some similarities when you click on create sequence, but they are different. So if you click on create sequence, you'll see that you have the option to start from scratch, just like a workflow. And then you also have some pre-made templates, just like a workflow. So in this case, it's pre-made sequences. You can do it from recent conversion. And if you click on it, before we dive into the rest of the video, we like to thank our video sponsor, CartFuel. CartFuel is the easiest and quickest way for you to accept one-time and recurring payments in HubSpot. All you need to do is connect your Stripe or PayPal account, configure your payment form by adding countdown timers, coupons, or order bumps, then copy and paste the code they provide you onto any site, including WordPress or HubSpot pages. Did we mention CartView has one-click upsells? That's right. Your customers can order more products without having to re-enter their credit or debit card with a single click. But you want to know what's the best part? When a sale occurs with CartFuel, your customer's name, email address, phone number, and products they purchase will teleport into HubSpot. It's like magic. This means you can trigger workflows to boost customer retention and decrease refund rates. All this and more with no custom code needed. Try CartFuel for free for 14 days by clicking the link in the description or comment section of this video. All right, let's get back to the content. It's going to give you um, a preview of what this entails. So there's going to be five steps. It's six business days to complete. And this is HubSpot. They, they created this for you so you don't have to. But what is the difference? Why do you use a sequence? You use a sequence when you want a more personalized touch. So if you have, um, you know, a client that you just met up with for coffee or, you know, you met up at an event and you want to follow up with that person, that is when you use sequences. So what you would do is you click on create sequence and then just like a workflow, you can set this up. So whenever someone is enrolled in this sequence, and I will show you how to enroll people in a second, whenever someone is enrolled in this sequence, um, you can do a particular action, which is send an automated email. Maybe you wanna call them. You can even uh, connect your LinkedIn account. In this case, we'll do an uh, automated email. We'll create a new email template. And then here we can actually set up an email. So we can say, um, nice meeting you at the event. Right. And then you can say whatever. Hi. And you can personalize it. So you can say hi, name, first name. And then you can say it was great meeting you. Want to catch up for further discussion. I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. Right. And then you can save this template. So now you have this uh, as a template and then you can do other things um, after you're done doing this particular thing. Once you have created your sequence, you can check out the settings. So you can send only send this during a period of time. And then you can also check out some of these automation on enrollment features. So now that you have your sequence set up, you can click on save and we'll say nice uh, meeting you uh sequence okay and i'm the owner because i created this now if you have different people in your hubspot account then um they will you know that person could create different sequences specifically for them one thing to note that sequences are a paid feature so if you're on the free hubspot plan you may not see this and it's because you need a paid plan in order to use this feature specifically sales add-on okay so once you have your sequences, you can check them out um, by going to sequences and then manage. So I already have two here. So nice meeting you sequence and then test sequence. So you can select the one that you want to enroll people in and then just click on enroll contacts. Now, again, this is not automated. This is manually. You're manually adding contacts to this particular sequence because you want to follow up with them and you, you know, you already did your outreach. Maybe you met them at, at the event, right? But you want to follow up with them via email. Then you just enroll them into the sequence um, that you want them to be a part of. And then you find the contact either by searching or just selecting. This is my test account. So that's why you see all this test stuff, but you enroll them. So let's say I wanted this person to be enrolled in my sequence. Then I can enroll them here. One thing to know is that before you can uh, enroll them into a sequence, you're going to uh, want to connect your um, email account. So it's going to ask you to connect your Gmail or any other email account that you that you have. I already set mine up, so that's why it's not asking me. But once you set it up, you'll see this and then you can edit this to however you like. You can also send later if you want. You already create your sequence um, inside of the sequence editor, but when you are ready to actually enroll someone inside of a sequence, you can then edit that email that's gonna go out to them to either be more specific, more tailored to them. So you don't, you know, you're not always rewriting the email every time. Maybe you're just adding in a few other bits of detail that you haven't added previously. 
And then once you're done, you can click on start sequence. Now, I do want to show you one other way that you can add someone to a sequence. Um, you may not want to go to the sequences and then, you know, select the manage button and then go to the sequence and then click enroll contacts. That's like a lot of buttons to click. So what you could do is go to contacts, find the contact that you're already talking to, that you already have uh, sent a message to, or, you know, you know that you want to send a message to. Then you select that contact. And then inside of that person's contact profile, you can click on uh, create an email here and it's going to do the same thing. So you can either, you know, write the email here or you can click on sequences and then select the sequence that you want to enroll this person to select that sequence. And then you can do the same thing that we just did previously. So I think this is an easier way to do it just because, you know, you're probably always looking at your contacts anyway, and it's probably, you know, it's just easier to then go into your sequences and then, you know, clicking on a sequence and then rolling that contact in a sequence. You can just go to that person, that contact profile, click on email and then enroll them into the sequence. So I hope this gave you a good understanding between the differences of workflows and sequences, and then also how to use them for your business, because I know that uh, you got HubSpot for a reason. You want to use their great features like sequences and like workflows. So now you can. So if you like this video, make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you leave a like. It really helps the video to get to other people just like yourself who may need to know how this works. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.